The one thing we need to talk about with this frequency table is this. Do you see how there's 40 to 50 and then 50 to 60? What number's showing up twice? 50. 50. So when we look at the interval 40 to 50, and that's stopping just short of 50. 40 to 50. So 40 is included. 49.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
fitted five, two, two. Two, two. What is going on? I got a four. I got a five. I got a three. I got a six. I got a three, three, one. Now, what's something that's popping in this histogram that was not in the last histogram? What's something you noticed, Meredith? So the other one kind of went like up and then down. This one's all over the place. Yeah, this one kind of went up and then down, then up, and then down. The other one was just up, then down. So there's some data happening in here that was kind of like missing on the other histogram because it was buried in the larger interval, right? So... Let's talk about pro and con with that. That previous one was pretty easy to do. We didn't have to graph many things. The con to this was it was more labor intensive. Anybody find that? Yeah. You're counting more, drawing more bars. But we have data now that looks like, man, th those days, 75 to 80 that week, if you're worried about picking your tomatoes, don't go on vacation that week. Right? Where before you'd have to avoid three weeks of vacation to hit the max spot, right? It kind of looks like the dot It does more mimic the dot plot because our intervals are smaller yeah. where the dot plot's like the smallest interval, right? Yeah. Each, each spe specific piece of data. So there's going to be pros and cons to all these. Now this one does, it, like again, more refined. Like we could even make smaller intervals but then we'd have even more bars. So like there's a balance point of effectiveness. Um, so that's the point of that. Like this, this change right here does not happen in that previous, right? You guys recognize that? Cool. You guys stay on 2.3. I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna make this ready so that I can do the stuff from 2.3 on it. All right. So this says histogram, but we're gonna do the box plot on here. Okay. And so for the box plot, we need this information. You're gonna see something like a low, first quartile, median, second quartile, high. I think it's min and max. I put low and high because otherwise min and max is just M and M. Yeah, I messed that up. It is quartile three. Oh, no. Okay, so let's, let's take care of the two hard ones. I'm going to take the hard ones. You ready? The low and high. The low is 47, and the high is 90. So all we're doing is saying the highest one is 90, the lowest one is 47. And what, we're gonna, what the box plot does, if you don't remember from last year is it's cutting our data up into quarters. So if we're gonna, like, let's pretend like our data is an apple and we wanna cut it into quarters. What's the first cut we're gonna make on our apple? Down the middle. Half, so let's do it. Now, I don't have a fancy name for the method I'm about to do and you're not gonna be able to see it on the video, but I call it the double, the double pointer finger method. Instead of crossing off numbers to get to the middle one, I like point to them and I go one at a time with both fingertips. Because sometimes if you do the cross it off thing. Um, I'm so confused. What did you? I'm going to the middle. Sometimes if you do the cross it off thing. Right here's the middle. I believe. But I check it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Ah, I didn't even get the middle right. So time to do it again. That's why you double... Well, you can do the cross it off method, but it's going to gunk things up. So if you do the cross off method, you have to do it like this, like one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen. And now you see how I'm between these two? So the median is right here. Yep. So that's 71. Is there easy to Nope. You got to get in the middle. I am actually going to erase all this other stuff, so it's not in my way. So that's how you get the middle. Oh, no. It's sneaking out. Okay. That's how you get the middle. Now, so my apple is cut in half. And if I want quarters, what am I going to do with my halves? Hey, yeah. Cutting my halves in half. I'm going to cut my halves in half, and then I'm going to have what? Quarters. Quarters. So... One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven. Ooh, that one actually worked out. So 62 is where, so what I'm saying is a quarter of my data up in here, another quarter of my data is up in here. 
So I got two quarters. I got that other half. Third quarter is... How do I get that half in the quarters? Uh, half, half, half the quarter. half. So, half the half. chop, 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 chop. Oh, these aren't chops. Seventy-eight. So all, all I essentially did with all this, which it is a little labor intensive, is I took all my data, I split it in half, and I split my halves in half. And then I noted where those were. So now I have different points that are going to give me quarters of data. And here's how we get it on a number line. And I need to go from 47 to 90. I'm going to go by fives. Let's start with 40. 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90. I don't know what you're saying. I had to go to this other slide because otherwise I won't have my numbers and my stuff on the same slide. So. 75, 80, 85, 90. So I'm going to put my... I like to make the box first. There's a fancy word for everything in the box. It's called the interquartile range okay enter inside quartiles so i've got a 62 i've got a 71 and i've got a 78 and this is the box part of my box pot or box and whisker now of the so 50 percent of my data is located within this box 50 percent of my data points would be in this where is it just slightly more concentrated 60 the 71 to 78, that means there's seven pieces, a quarter of my data is within that range of seven, within that week, actually. Right? Do you guys see that this is a little smaller than this? Yeah. And the size tells you how concentrated your data is. A quarter of my data points are in this box. Another quarter of my data points are in this box. Well, shouldn't they all be the same? No, they have the same number of data points. So if it's squished together, a quarter of your data points are in that smaller range if it's further apart a quarter of your data is more spread out so like watch what happens when we look at the the minimum and maximum here from there to there a quarter of my data points lie between 47 and 62 that means they're way more spread out right they're not dense and then on the higher end you can see 90 to there is a little closer right which means the, a quarter of my data spread out on the low end, but then the high end, it's th those three quarters are actually kind of similarly distributed. We use the word distribution to talk about this, data distribution. And again, these are called quartiles. A quarter of my data falls between 47 and 62, a quarter of my data points. Now, you don't know where they fall. You know that there's definitely one here because it's the minimum. But a bunch of them could fall right around 55, right? Or probably not, depending on what's higher. But a quarter of my data points fall somewhere between these. A quarter of my data points fall somewhere between these. A quarter of my data points fall somewhere between these. And a quarter of my data points fall between these. And the point I'm making is, if you have a small quarter, it's still got the same number of data points in that small area. That would mean it's really concentrated, right? So you can look at this and say, it looks like the smallest quartile is right here. In fact, you know it is because this is a difference of 12 and this is a difference of 7. So my scale is not great. But this is, if a quarter of our data is in this smallest portion, that's our highest concentration of like data. The more spread out it is, the more spread out a quarter of our data is. Okay. They're pretty cool. A lot of times you'll see these doubled up. They'll be two stacked comparing two different things, kind of like a double bar graph would compare two things.